The best decisions that we make as entrepreneurs are by listening to our gut. But here's the thing, it doesn't help us when we're moving into the unknown, when we're digging into things where we do not have experience in. When you're in that situation, you can't trust your gut because your gut doesn't have any frame of reference. To make those types of decisions, you need to leverage business intelligence, data, and insight. Business intelligence, and analytics, and insight, they're all fancy words. What it basically comes down to is making decisions that are driven in data you can trust. This is actually a little bit challenging to do, but probably easier than you may think. If you are successful, then you have grown your business, and you know that you hit a certain point where you need to make a financial decision. You need to make, take a risk, you need to make an investment, you need to finance something, you need to do something. And so while your gut says, I need to do this, of course, you're gonna look at your finances, you're gonna call your CFO or your controller, you're gonna sit down with your accountant, you're gonna, you're gonna actually run through the numbers because your gut says to make this decision, you wanna rationalize it with a business model. I'm doing this right now, you know, we're, we're expanding very, very quickly, we're growing very quickly, and I need to bring on a, a lot of team members. And so I sat down with my controller and I said, okay, we ran through the numbers, right? We leveraged three year trailing data, and then we forecasted out our growth, like we leveraged numbers and business intelligence to make very smart decisions. So I know exactly what I can afford to spend to grow this team without putting the company at risk. But there are other areas of our business that have just as much intelligence or data points if we just took the time to ask the right questions, to investigate them and pull the data. That's it. Any data point could be something that we can have learnings from. And so when you are moving into a new area, when you're making a decision where you cannot trust on simply past experience, the very next thing you need to do is you need to dig into research or business intelligence, which is just the numbers and things that are running within your business or your sales or your marketing or your advertising. And then you need to derive from that key pieces of insight. There's so much there if we just grabbed it, if we just took the time to allow it to inform our decisions. But most business owners don't. But I can tell you in my experience what holds most people back from this. So first, most people aren't aware of how to capture the data. What data is significant, what to capture and what not to capture. Of course, when it comes to your financing, you'll look at your balance sheet, you'll look at your P&Ls, you will maybe run some forecast models the way that I described. What about our sales? Are we actually tracking sales the way we could? Most people don't know their close rate. Most people don't have an understanding of the different target audiences, client size, or indicators that would actually lead to a better sale to a better client. Most people don't know this data. They struggle to make decisions in it. Should you let Fred, the salesperson, go? If the decision is just, we set a target and they didn't hit their target, that's, that's not enough data to be able to either coach Fred to be better or to be able to set the next Fred up for success or to be able to increase sales in general. Fred's not doing well, but Gary's doing well. Why is Gary doing better? Is he breaking the system? Is he doing things that are better? Like there's, there's so much information and insight and data that can be gleaned from this if we start tracking things. Look at advertising or marketing. Every digital channel has the possibility, and even offline channels have the possibility to set up tracking so that way you can attribute back to that investment whether it's generating leads or business for you. If you take the time to set up the right tracking, if you take the time to dig into what the numbers are saying, and then allow that to inform month over month and quarter over quarter what it is you're doing, your total spend will either shrink or your total spend will go a lot further. It'll generate more leads, it'll generate more business with the same amount of spend but only if you're tracking. The worst thing that can happen in business is to say, we thought this would happen. It didn't. We don't know why it didn't happen. We don't know how to proceed. <laughs> it's like, let's just try the next thing. But at no point are we really digging into what are the key aspects of it that are key, that's keeping it from working. And it is an issue with, with the system or is it an issue with the tactic or is it an issue with whatever, right? Most people aren't digging deep enough into it. If you wanna run the type of business that actually takes each one of these incremental improvements you can make by getting the right data, the right insight and acting on it, you need to start leveraging analytics and insight and business intelligence across your operations, your sales, advertising and marketing and your finance. I think most business owners look to finance for this stuff, but do you apply to sales, marketing, advertising? Do you apply to your operations? That's what's key. Have the mindset and be open to allowing data to inform the decisions you make.
The next parts are tactics, the next parts are strategies, the next parts are easy. You look at the areas of your business where you believe additional insight or additional data will help you make smarter decisions. So look for the natural data points that exist within the different parts of the business that you're looking into. If they don't exist, create one that doesn't introduce friction, but just create one so you can capture it. And once you're collecting data and you're capturing data, you have two choices in front of you. One, make that data transparent. If you share it with a lot of people, listen, if, if a project comes in and it takes 90 days to complete and it should only have taken 30, if you capture the day it starts and you capture the day it ends, and you have your average project time from doing this all the time, simply by advertising that internally, by making that data known, by having those two tracking points and then your average and saying, this project took way longer, the system might fix itself. You know, people <laughs> don't like to be called out on why things are broken. Now you can change your operations, you can change your process, you can charge a lot more because you're not losing money now in this longer project. You can make the business changes you need to make to allow that 90 day window to now make sense. But you wouldn't know that if you weren't tracking those data points. And then your last option is to take this data and to sit down with someone who has the experience to look at this data and help interpret it for you. I'm not great at looking at financial data, so I have a controller and I have an accountant. My accountant has 40 years of experience being an auditor and he can tell me based on all of his experiences what he thinks a business of my size with my investment, with my carrying costs, with all of these things, what I should do, right? That's advice. If I'm getting sued, I'm gonna go to a lawyer. That's advice. I can take my data and I can sit down with someone who has experience in HR. Why do we have such a high turnover of staff? First of all, do you know that you have a high turnover of staff or do you just feel like you do, right? Are you tracking the data? So like in my company, I know that if someone grew up in the country or a small town or they're an immigrant, they fit in really well here. I don't know if it's my working habit or the culture or whatever it is, but if someone grew up like super suave, downtown type elite person, they just, I don't know, they just don't, they don't fit in here. So how did I arrive at that data point, right? It's really weird. It's from experience. It's from asking people. It's from tracking people. It's from knowing that when I want to go out and hire people, I'm specifically looking for people who have those data points. And so collecting this data, making it transparent, and then sitting down and figuring out how to make it work for you. This is literally magic for businesses who have never done it before. They are blown away by the ease that they can make decisions, the confidence they have in moving really quickly, and more than anything, all of those frustrations and all of those worries and all of those things that kind of piss us off because we feel like things should be differently than they are, the data and the decisions that come from the data and the actions we take from the data erase all of those things. So if you're not leveraging this in your finance, you have to be right away. If you're not using this in your sales, your marketing, your advertising, you have to be leveraging this right away. I would say the holy grail is the operation side. Why does FedEx know that, that taking the time to turn a key in the truck costs money to replace the keys? It wears out the keys and it slows the drivers down by mere seconds. So they go ahead and put in fobs so that way the trucks will start immediately as soon as the people come in at the push of a button. These businesses know that doing only right turns and laying out their plans for their routes through only right turns saves so much time that they will not have their drivers do any left turns ever. That's pretty crazy stuff, right? That's the operation side. There are probably areas within your business, whether you're tiny, whether you're huge, whether you're really successful or not, there are probably parts of your business through technology, through data, through tracking these points, looking into them and fixing your operations where you can increase efficiencies, where you can find tons of safety savings and where you can make life easier for your team and your customers. Focus on finance. Focus on the data that happens within your sales, your marketing, and your advertising and start leveraging it to make your business better. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.